I'm Phil Wodoy. I'm the roads foreman for the city of Cold Lake. So the purpose of the program is to mitigate as many uh, driving hazards as possible uh, for both emergency services and the residents of Coal Lake. We want to do it in a way that's uh, cost effective with minimal uh, environmental impact. So we have a, a ranking system uh, that was uh, established by council and administration. Uh, each uh, priority level has a color assigned to it on our mapping and then each uh, priority level also has a trigger point which we start uh, snow clearing or storm removal at. So we have five priority rankings. Uh, the first priority is our red routes, our number one. Uh, those include uh, Highway 28, uh, the hospital road, um, the downtown core, uh, business district, uh, as well as uh, Kingsway onto Four Wing Coal Lake. Priority two, uh, which is blue on our mapping, uh, includes uh, some of the minor arterials that run alongside the highway, including the highway commercial areas, as well as the Lakeshore commercial area in Coal Lake North, and uh, the trail system, uh, which is handled by Parks and Recreation. Priority three, uh, which is yellow on our mapping, uh, includes some of the remaining commercial areas in Cold Lake South, uh, behind bumper to bumper, uh, fountain tire area, uh, the agriplex kind of sector, um, as well as some major and minor collector areas that aren't necessarily covered by priority two. Uh, priority four, which on our mapping is supposed to be green, is left open for any future expansion or any uh, consideration by council for some uh, enhanced uh, residential areas. And then priority five, uh, which is our gray routes, uh, is, is all the remaining residential roads in the uh, uh, residential areas in both uh, Four Wing and uh, in Cold Lake. So each of our priorities are assigned a, a trigger point, uh, how much snow either has to be falling or fallen on the ground in order to trigger either snow removal or snow clearing. With priority one, our red routes, uh, clearing starts and is usually in progress when we have the one to three uh, centimeters of accumulated snow, uh, so a typical snowfall. Priority two, which are blue, are cleared within 72 hours and that's when our snow accumulates between three to five centimeters. Priority three, which are our yellow routes, are typically cleared within five days, and that's three centimeters of packed snow, not accumulated snow. And then our residential areas, which are our gray routes, our priority five, are uh, cleared within 15 days of reaching a seven centimeter snowpack. Uh, crews are constantly checking road conditions. They work seven days a week uh, from the hours of 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, we are sanding uh, along the same priority routes as our snow clearing routes, uh, high traffic areas as well as pedestrian crossings. Uh, it's all dependent on, on the year that we're having and the amount of snow that we get and the budget that we have to work with. Uh, some years we don't get much snow at all and uh, gray roots are only cleared maybe once a year uh, or a season rather. Uh, other years we have large amounts of snow and we're in there more frequently. Uh, we try to find a, a happy balance uh, to provide a high level of service while being fiscally responsible to the taxpayers. For priority one and priority two routes, the red and blue routes, our goal is to get them cleaned up as quick as possible as soon as our trigger points are achieved. Uh, the City of Coal Lake uh, retains a contractor for snow removal. Uh, they work sometimes a little bit outside of our regular work hours to get that done as quickly as possible, especially through school zones, uh, so that we're not impacting school buses the next day. For residential areas, we usually know a few days in advance when we'll be in the neighborhood. Uh, we'll typically post signs at the entrances to the neighborhoods 24 hours ahead of time. Uh, generally, crews work between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., uh, so the graders will be on the road early in that morning. Uh, it's also a good idea to follow the City of Coal Lake's social media accounts, the Facebook page, the Twitter account for, for maps, uh, and we typically post them on the city's webpage as well, coalake.com.
Once the snowblowers are done snowblowing into the trucks, uh, the snow is hauled off to one of our two snow dump sites. Uh, we have one just by Holy Cross School. Uh, we usually use that for city facilities uh, such as the downtown core uh, and when the city does any pickup in the south. Uh, when the contractor does Coal Lake North, they haul it to a snow dump site in the north just by English Bay Road and First Avenue, and the snow sits there until the spring and melts and is usually gone by the summertime. Our biggest challenge is navigating around vehicles that are left on the street. We're often on a really tight schedule, so we don't have a lot of time to wait for every homeowner to come out when they realize it's snow removal and move their vehicle and for us to come back. Um, when, we're, when we're doing snow removal, um, you know, the graders typically make four passes along the road when they're cutting snow up. Um, and you know, by the third pass or the fourth pass, when the, the homeowner realizes that the car's in the way, we're, we're moving on to another road. We don't have time to turn around and come back. It just, it's, it'd be very time consuming. The biggest thing that we can do to help our snow removal crews is to move our vehicles ahead of time. Again, we're posting our signs 24 hours ahead of time. Uh, so if you're not home to move a vehicle, ask a family member or maybe a neighbor to move it for you. Uh, the same goes for trailers or RV units that might be parked on the road still. And the biggest thing that we have to deal with that, that causes problems for us are those rubber uh, driveway ramps. Um, they're hard for our grader operators to see. Um, if the grader operator is grading early in the morning and it's a little dark out, they won't be able to see it get flipped into the windrow. And if the snowblower sucks one of those in, uh, it's usually 45 minutes to an hour for us to get it unclogged uh, and potentially could cause a, quite a bit of damage to the snowblower. When you see our snow removal crews out working, uh, just give them lots of room and take a different route if you can. Uh, the fewer obstacles that we have to deal with, the, the better and the quicker we can get in and out of your neighborhood. When we're scheduling our residential snow pickup, we usually work pretty close with our waste management department to make sure there's no conflicts. Uh, we don't want to be picking up snow the same days we're picking up garbage. Uh, if we do have the off chance that we are picking up in those neighborhoods at the same time, don't bring your garbage cans in, leave them on the curb. Uh, we work with our waste operators to make sure they get picked up first, uh, as long as they're out by seven in the morning, and then we will follow around with our snow removal crews to make sure they're all taken off the road. Just that we got a lot of road to cover. When you add up all five priorities of snow pickup that we have to do, we have over 155 kilometers of road that we have to blade, snow blow, and truck away. So it's quite a bit of snow. Uh, if it seems like we're taking too long to get to your neighborhood, just be, please be patient. Our, uh, our city staff and our contractors are working as hard as they can to get to each neighborhood and get them hauled away as, as timely as they can. If there's a spot you think we missed or a particular problem area, feel free to reach out to us at the City Public Workshop at 780-594-4496 or our social media accounts on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, all of our vehicles are GPS, so we know where we're plowing, we know where we're sanding, we know where we're picking up, so uh, we'll be able to address those problems pretty promptly. Thank you for your cooperation and drive safe.